Hello and welcome back to Somerville Media Center Live. I'm Joe Lynch. Today is June 23rd, 2020, and it is my pleasure for the City Council update to be joined once again by President Matt McLaughlin. Matt, on this hot, steamy June day, how are you? I'm doing well, Joe. I'm still uh, sheltering in place, so I'm quite cool right now. And uh, work keeps me from going outside and enjoying myself, so I'm staying cool. We, we, are, we are bearing a summer of like we've never had before, Matt, whether to go out or not. So council update, COVID update, all yours, Matt. Take it away. All right, thanks, Joe. I'm going to give a brief update, um, and you can ask any questions you like. Uh, but basically, things are opening up. Uh, you know, the state has opened, uh, issued their guidelines for reopening. Uh, Somerville has their own guidelines, and I'll go over that really quickly. Uh, as of today, there's been 975 uh, Somerville residents who've tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, 865 have recovered, uh, and there's uh, 31 fatalities right now. Uh, city offices will remain closed uh, for the foreseeable future. There's not a plan to open it just yet. Um, and, but they are opening up uh, many facilities across the city, such as pools, playgrounds, basketball hoops. Uh, between June 26th and July 1st, all of these are going to be opening up again so people can go to the parks, uh, assuming they follow proper safety procedures. And you can find all this information on the procedures at the Summerville website at summervillema.gov. Uh, they outline in detail uh, what's going to be open and under what standards. So the same thing for small businesses. I know, Joe, you're a part of that. Is, uh, you know, there's a lot of outdoor seating being opened up. I'm very happy to see. I had a uh, dinner at Gaucho's on Broadway the other day, sat down outside and uh, enjoyed a dinner. And I encourage people to do that, following safety procedures, of course. Uh, and they're also working towards indoor seating as well. Uh, so then the other update is, uh, the face mask requirement uh, has been relaxed for the summer. Uh, so basically, you know, this is just a common sense acknowledgement that people aren't going to wear the mask at every second of their lives. Uh, so what we're asking is still to wear a mask when you're outside. If you're not near somebody and you need a break to take the mask off, uh, you can do so. But we encourage people that when you see someone coming towards you, if someone's close to 30 feet from you, uh, you should put the mask back on in, t in anticipation of passing them by. Uh, so the mask requirement is still there, uh, but it's just an acknowledgement that it's getting hot and people are going to take their masks off. And people should understand, too, that although there is a fine associated with not wearing a mask, no fines have been issued. It is merely just to strongly encourage people to do so. And if you look across the country, a lot of states that kind of scoffed at the idea of face masks and now following suit, so I think we're on the right track for that. Uh, so that's all the announcements I have, but I'm happy to talk more about anything you like. Great, Matt, you and I have 27 minutes by ourselves. You don't have to share the mic with anybody but me. That oh, might, yeah. That might be a dangerous thing, though. Definitely, we'll definitely be saying things we shouldn't. <laughs> COVID update, I just wanna, I, I wanna get your take on it because this is more of an opinion on your part. How do you think the city of Somerville is doing in terms of the protocols that they've set in place, us being one of the most densely populated cities in New England? How do you think we have fared in terms of the number of infections, the number of deaths? Do you think we're doing better than most municipalities? I think we're doing better than most. Uh, and you know, there's a variety of reasons for that, that uh, we have a lower rate than a lot of places, and some of them have seen a lowering, a lowering and a flattening of uh, COVID cases. There's a variety of reasons of that. Some of it is just circumstantial, uh, but others are the fact that we took it serious from the very beginning. And I think that's the difference you see across the country, that the places that took it serious in the beginning, they have less uh, issues. And the places that kind of scoffed at it and it didn't bother them at first, they are now seeing that it's a problem and they're adapting to what we've been doing the whole time. So I think we have done a good job, but it is also uh, complacency kills. I know you, you were in the military, so that's a saying you're familiar with is complacency kills. And people might get complacent in the summertime, even in some of them. Uh, so I encourage people to, you know, regardless of whatever guidelines that are put out regularly, uh, the standard I've always had is, you know, wash your hands regularly 
wear a mask, keep distance from people. Um, those are three things that you should be doing for the foreseeable future and don't get relaxed thinking that, oh, you know, some of those cases have gone down. I don't have to wear a mask. I can go to the club or I can uh, go to a large gathering, things like this. Yeah, you, you know, it's interesting when you see how well we have done as a city and um, Massachusetts as a state taking early actions, you see some of the other states who have relaxed their, um, their protocols. They relaxed them maybe on uh, May 30th or May 1st. That is where the infection rate is starting to climb again. And they fully expect to peak sometime later this, uh, this month and in, into early July in those states. But I guess that, you know, moving forward, um, we are looking at the reopening of a lot of retail, including restaurants, including bringing that extra seating that the restaurants need out into the streets. Um, you and I happened to take a walk. In my other role as licensing commissioner, we took a walk last weekend, kind of checked out um, East Broadway and that whole area. So it does sound like some progress is being made. I know that um, other folks have said they've, they've been visiting some of the establishments there. But overall, Matt, we're now, people are on the move. It's summertime, people wanna get out, people wanna do more physical activity. Do we think, you know, Somerville is ready if we hit a second surge sometime in the fall? That's a, that's a very difficult question because it's, you know, predicting the future and, you know, this is still very new to a lot of people. So I would say that, you know, nobody in America was really ready for this uh, and we reacted strongly quickly. So I expect that we'd react strongly quickly again. Uh, but uh, one thing that does concern me is, you know, there seems to be a sentiment that I, I, I think that even if things get worse across America. I don't see us going back uh, to shelter, to the full on shelter in place that really protected us to begin with. Uh, so that's a concern and one that's, you know, it's gonna happen again. Uh, we have already seen a resurgence. They're predicting it'll come back in the fall. Uh, these are things that we have to prepare for. So um, I feel prepared in the sense that we did as good as we could when it hit. So I expect us to be, the, even more prepared than in the future. But, you know, it's also the very difficult decisions to make about what to open, what to keep closed, um, you know, how this is impacting the business community, how it's impacting people's jobs. Um, so I, I feel like we're as ready as you can be to, to answer your question. Yeah, I, 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 I hope, and honestly, Matt, I think you might be right. We prepared properly in the first place, we're, we'll be prepared for the second wave if it comes. Um, let's go to two major topics that the city council has been addressing over the last couple of weeks. Uh, my understanding is you finally got presented the fiscal year 21 budget by the mayor's staff, um, him submitting it to the council for review and hopefully, hopefully approval. Um, incorporated in that is another issue that the council has taken up um, over the last couple of weeks, and that is the um, funding for the police. So I wanna kind of separate those two, Matt, if I could, and just talk about the budget um, that was presented to you, and then we can talk about the issue of police funding and redistribution later on in the conversation. But it's my understanding is that the budget that was submitted to the city council has a dollar increase of 8.5 million over last year is that correct that is correct and i was surprised um and i'll say pleasantly surprised although yeah I, there is an increase in this year's budget yes so the what the mayor does during the budget process is he lays it out in terms of what he expects to see in terms of revenues coming into the city and he lays out for you the plan for um, expenditures and those expenditures run everything from salaries and benefits to um, new software that may be critical can you tell me and tell the viewers that what are some of the line items that got seriously reduced or zeroed out and, and I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about like travel you know on behalf uh, behalf of city employees um, 
any any special kind of travel budget this year? You know, I, I haven't looked at the travel budget, but uh, every department basically was encouraged to reduce their spending. And one of the one of the issues we come across in the budget every year is, you know, there'll be a position that's been vacant for six months, and they want to fund that position until they find a hire. And we usually it takes a great deal of time for us to go through each one and be like, I'm going to cut that, uh, you know, cut this job by five weeks until you find a hire. Uh, so this year that that's not the case. They're just cutting it now. Um, so they're not addressing the new hires just yet. Uh, and for me, you know, there is an increase. Um, and for me, I'm just grateful that nobody's getting laid off. Uh, that I, th I think that was the big fear uh, that a lot of cities were facing. So the fact that we're in a position where we can actually make sure everyone stays employed during this crisis, I think is a positive thing. And the council is going to look at it. We, we, uh, for people who don't know, I know you know, but a lot of people in the public don't know that the city council's only power in the budget is to cut. Uh, we can't, we can't increase funding and we can't reallocate resources. So the only power we have is to cut. And even in that situation, we can make a cut and the mayor could use general funds or something and, you know, reallocate it on his own. So it really is a difficult situation. So we, we try to save money. Uh, the city council's goal is to save money and to have transparency in our government. And that's what we're doing. Uh, every year we take the cuts very seriously. And this year we're under a real tight deadline to make the budget because we were only introduced it last Friday. Uh, but we're going to take our time and analyze it thoroughly and uh, make sure that the people have a voice in the budget <laughs> process. So Matt, how much, uh, I understand it and, and I try to, you know, when people ask me about it, I just say, well, I look at it the same way I look at my own checkbook. Revenues have to come in, expenses have to be paid. And if I have a shortfall, I'm gonna fund that with maybe a savings account or some kind of a fund that I put aside for any shortfall. How much money are they proposing to bring out of free cash in total? Does anyone know at this point? I couldn't give you that answer, but I'll tell you, before this, we were looking at a 20% decrease in state funding, and that's not even including the revenue. Uh, so we were told we have about 15 million uh, in for rainy day fund, for lack of a better word. It's free cash, as it's known, uh, which is basically all the money that we don't spend every year. Uh, so this is, you know, we, we, have a, we have a cushion to get through this year. And the thing to keep in mind, too, is this is the budget for the upcoming year. So a lot of the revenue we already had, we already had some predictions, and a lot of the impacts that we're having from COVID right now will be felt in next year's budget. Uh, so we need to be prepared for that as well. But I am glad that we have this cushion to work with and that people who work for the city aren't gonna suffer and services won't suffer either. So if, if the use of the free cash for the this current budget that you're looking at if the use of the free cash is such that it doesn't afford the city to really put any more into free cash i mean it's like a savings account right you're using part of your money in the savings account to prop up the budget um what happens if by december january december of 2020 january of 2021 what happens if we have another wave and we have another um, spending spree that we have to go on COVID related. Do we have enough money for that or are we going to depend on the federal government to fund that? Well, again, that's a big future question. Um, but I would say that we were afraid that everything you just said would have happened now and it hasn't happened. Uh, so we're fortunate in that sense. Uh, and we still need help from the federal and the state government for a great many things. Like we're, a lot of our funding is dependent on that and we're hoping to get more assistance. So you're asking, you know, will, will, the, will a second wave hurt our economy? Absolutely it will. And it will definitely hurt some of it as a whole and we're gonna to have to deal with that and hopefully we have enough prior funding to make sure it doesn't hurt people, but we're not out of the woods yet, that's for sure. Yeah, so, so back to the budget in general, um, you've got a very, very compact time frame as to when you have to submit it. And I asked Rep Conley, Mike Conley, when he was on the show last week about the state budget. And they are thinking about, uh, forgive me for having the terminology wrong, but a one-twelfth budget 
meaning yeah. basically month to month. Can you can you update update our views and say what that really is all about? Yeah, so when, when a tight schedule, and you know, the city introduced the budget very late, uh, which is understandable because they were scrambling to try to accomplish what they did, which is to have a budget where nobody gets fired and the city functions properly. Uh, so it took them much longer than expected. We usually start the budget in early June, and we would just introduce the budget last Friday. We had a special meeting on Friday uh, just to obtain the budget. And now we're going over it. So we're having meetings right now. Um, there was a first official meeting yesterday. Uh, there's another meeting today and there is a public hearing tomorrow at six o'clock. If anybody wants to weigh in and uh, make their voice heard on the budget process, you can go to the city's website, someofoma.gov and go to the city council link and find the, uh, find the access uh, to attend that meeting and also to speak. Uh, so, Basically, we're, we're starting now, we're starting late, late June, and there is an issue where a lot of cities are facing the fact that usually the budget would be done by June 30th, and if the budget isn't done by the end of June, there's consequences regarding city contracts and things like this, uh, but the state has relaxed some of those rules, understanding that, you know, city governments are facing this, and the city council is kind of pressured to get this all done by June, and we kind of unanimously decided that that's just not going to happen, uh, especially under present circumstances when the budget's being so scrutinized. We couldn't just say, we're going to get this done in three or four days. Uh, we, we have an eight-day schedule to get the budget done, which is a reduction from the past few years when we take 11, 12 days to accomplish the budget. Uh, so we're going to take our time with it. We're going we're gonna to do it as quickly as possible. We're, we're not going to leave any stones unturned. And we expect the budget will go over into July, in which case we have a one month budget prepared to propose. And hopefully five or six, seven days later, we'll have a full budget. So we're not looking at a really long time period that will affect these contracts. But we just, we, we couldn't in good conscience propose, pass a budget so quickly when we take the job so seriously about uh, scrutinizing the budget. So rather than just, forgive the phrase, rather than just rubber stamp it, you've given yourself more time to scrutinize and then you'll, you'll have something probably by mid-July, end of July. I hope so. I hope we're done by mid-July, worst case scenario, end of July. Um, and as you said, I've used this line several times, is you know the city council, we're all out of rubber stamps. Uh, so we're, we're not a rubber stamp commission. And, you know, but we're not, I'm not trying to obstruct the budget either because it really impacts a lot of people's lives, uh, both residents and uh, city employees. So we're going to take it seriously. We're going to do our job and we're going to get it done as soon as we can. Good. One of the, one of the components in there, Matt, are uh, things that we, the residents, are going to have to figure out how we're going to pay for. My understanding is that there is a water and sewer increase coming. Yeah, that's correct. And that's all Councilman McLaughlin wants to say. All right, there is, there, there is a proposed water and sewer increase. They proposed it last year as well. And, you know, we, last year we rejected the initial proposal uh, of increase. And then they had to come back with a lower number. So I, I don't really have anything to say about that until we actually have the meeting and discuss it. No, nope, got it. And then I assume, um, trying to balance the budget, there will be some kind of an adjustment to the uh, property tax rates. Again, we'll say the property tax rate is directly tied to the amount we spend. So usually their tax rates come out later, but an increase in fund in spending would lead to an increase in property taxes. Got to get the money from somewhere. Yeah, unfortunately, we're very limited. Uh, we, we have only a few pools of revenue. That's why the state and federal funding is so important. Because the only thing we we have property tax, we have commercial tax, we have tickets and fines, which are all down. All these things are down right now in terms of revenue. So, but we are also hindered by uh, the prop two and a half. So where we can only increase uh, property tax by two and a half percent a year. Thanks, Matt. So one one final thought on budget. Um, my understanding from the school committee folks, they were successful in passing their budget in front of the school committee and they were successful and they were only um shouldn't say only but there were uh seven positions 
that were either cut or reallocated. I, I mean, I think that's a Herculean job for the school committee and the uh, superintendent's office to pull off, especially since it's so uncertain what the fall is gonna look like for kids. Yeah, well, I would say the greatest accomplishment for the school committee this year is finalizing the paraprofessionals contract. Uh, so people were really uh, excited to see that happen, um, fortunately, right before the budget. Uh, so people are getting raises in terms of paraprofessionals and increased benefits. Uh, there are, you know, there has been some movement on, I, I do believe that this, the uh, school budget has increased, uh, not as much as everybody wanted, but again, the, these are really trying times. So we're trying to stretch every dollar we can. I was happy that we were able to finalize that contract in the middle of a crisis. And hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll get through this and we can see what we need in the future as well. But I was happy to see that the school committee unanimously approved their budget. Uh, they seemed happy with it. And there was some requests for more funding in the future, but it was passed that night. It's great news. <clears throat> Let's go to the, um, the, one of the big topics that the council has been wrestling with. A number of orders have been put in through the city council to examine um, how the Somerville Police Department functions, where their funding comes from, and is there any way to redistribute some of that money uh, away from the police and into social service agencies? I'm just going to use that as a general, a general phrase, and I'm talking about mental health. Um, you know, a lot of the issues that police address today, and I think there are a lot of folks who are now saying, why is that on the police? Why do we not have a separate pool of funding for that? I don't want to get into the details because I know it's sensitive at this point to talk about how the budget will work with that. But can you give the viewers a general sense of what the council is thinking? Well, I, I can't give you a sense of what the council is thinking because everyone has different opinions. Uh, but I'll give you my sense is that, you know, I definitely feel like we've done a lot of good things in policing in some of them in terms of increase increase in awareness uh, dealing with de-escalation uh, addressing a lot of the issues that are happening nationwide uh, but one of the things that does bother me nationally with policing and i know is the issue with a lot of people is the increased militarization of the police basically you know police have tanks now automatic uh, semi-automatic machine guns uh, all sorts of weaponry, spy technology. Uh, the police across America have really become almost like a paramilitary organization. So I understand uh, the, the uh, outcry to defund or to reduce spending there. Um, but I would say, you know, I, I encourage everybody to look at the budget specifically. Uh, don't just take it as a national issue. Look at the specific sum of a budget and tell us what you think we could be doing better. Um, because I do believe that a lot of the resources that we do allocate have a positive impact on the community. So it's very difficult to say right now because there's 11 people. Uh, the mayor did approve. He presented the police budget with cuts already. Uh, and the city council is going to look at that and people are going to propose cuts most likely. And I just, you know, I think we need to strike a balance between respecting the wishes of the community, uh, advancing policing in the nation as a whole. And also realizing that, you know, just a few weeks ago, people wanted the police to enforce wearing a mask and socially distancing from each other. Um, and a few weeks later, we don't need them at all, apparently. So we, we, have, to, we have to look at, you know, what we can do better, uh, but also acknowledge that we have to take public safety into consideration as well. It's going to be fast paced, Matt. I mean, who, who would have predicted, you know, five months ago? Um, that we would be faced with a financial, uh, um, I'm sorry, with a, a global pandemic, that that would have its effect on the financial condition of a lot of people and businesses, uh, that we would have um, come to the forefront, uh, the murder of black men, which are now, call, uh, which has precipitated calling for um, in the in the far extreme of just banding disbanding police altogether to um, taking away these military grade weapons um, and making sure that police are there for 
what they were originally hired for. Um, so I know it's a difficult task for the mayor and for the council, um, but it's very difficult for people these days who are angry and frustrated and want something done. So I, I know it's gonna be a hard choice. You know, here in Somerville, uh, as you know, you know, I watch what goes on with the police. Um, to my knowledge, we have not had the type of incident um, that you see playing out across the country in the last 20 years. Um, so do we throw out our system in the Somerville Police Department? Um, certainly, I think it causes us to re-examine it and we have to re-examine it with a, a microscope. Well, I will tell you this. I mean, you know, there, there is this, the phrase defund the police out there. Uh, and a lot of people are advocating for that. Uh, in Northampton, I believe they advocated for a 50% decrease in police funding. Uh, but if you look at what some of the experts who are saying defund the police, what they're actually asking for uh, is very different than what the catchphrase is. So I think that there are, a, there's a thousand ways to address this problem. And we have to consider every single way. Uh, but the, there is no one way to deal with this that's going to solve all of our problems. Uh, so we have to look at it. And, you know, Somerville has done a lot of great things around policing. But that doesn't make us immune from what's happening nationwide either. Uh, so we're going to, and, and this is also an issue that I've been very passionate about since I was a teenager, uh, dealing with police issues in the community. So uh, I'm very well aware of the problems and want to be a part of the solution. Uh, I, <clears throat> I love the phrase, Matt. <clears throat> want to be part of the solution. Yeah. Let's go a little bit further. Um, what, are your, what are your budget due dates and what do the meetings look like? I know you just mentioned at the top of the show that you have the public hearing tomorrow night. Yeah, the public hearing is Wednesday night. Um, the public hearing is Wednesday night. We have an eight day schedule that you can find on the city of Somerville's website. Um, and it may go over eight days, but we'll see. So it really is we're going to get it. We're going to do our job. We're going to get it done, but we're not going to uh, be pressured to make hasty decisions. Matt McLaughlin, eight days a week, going to be a hard day's night. I want to thank you for joining me once again, City Council President Matt McLaughlin for the Somerville Media Center. Joe Lynch, please stay safe, stay informed. Councilor, we'll see you next time. Right, thanks, Joe.